that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Uh, today we have a reading from 2 Corinthians 1, 12 through 20, uh, uh, page number 817 in your pew Bibles. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom but on God's grace. For we do not write you anything you cannot read or understand and I hope that as you have understood us in part you will come to understand fully that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit, visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no. But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This passage just happened to fall on this Sunday. Uh, we've been going through this first chapter of Second. Uh, Corinthians, Paul's letter to uh, to the Corinthians, his second letter, probably theoretically his fourth letter. We don't have First uh, Corinthians and Third Corinthians. We have second his second letter and his fourth letter in our Bibles, which we call First and Second Corinthians. So, so some of this refers to uh, things that we don't have. Uh, we can only assume what he had written in another letter that he's referring to uh, in some of these passages. But I think it's neat that this fell on this Sunday because I thought, what an appropriate um, text for today. Say amen, somebody. Can somebody say amen? That's what Paul's saying in this passage. I know, I know, I'm not, you know, I wasn't born last night. I know people, you know, sometimes get a little worried if you're in an amen church. Right? You know, I don't want to be saying amen. But this is just one of many passages where Paul or the other biblical writers tell us the importance of saying amen to what God has said. So we're just going to look at that for a few minutes today. I know it's already late. My stomach was growling earlier as the food smell started coming up. I had to go in there and eat a banana just to make sure I could get through this thing. Otherwise, the sermon could, the sermon could have been real short. But, uh, but uh, I'm hoping uh, to cover all of these verses today in just a few minutes and, and you get uh, what God is speaking to us today from uh, this passage. Paul, writing to these Corinthians, really affirms that he came with the best of intentions. Uh, he, he had a clear conscience. Uh, I don't know that that is as valuable. I mean, it is as valuable. I don't know that it is appreciated as much in this day as it has been in the past. Uh, uh, I, I think for many, many years, we used to really embrace the importance of having a clear conscience. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Nowadays, I'm telling you, I, I am amazed at how easily people can lie right in your face. Anybody else shocked by that nowadays? I mean to tell you, uh, don't, don't tell me we're not in a different culture because you, a 10-year-old kid with one eye and half sense can see we are in a different culture. Amen? It, it's a fact. 
But Paul had a clear conscience. Even though there were people in the city of Corinth and in that region who were accusing Paul of being a flip-flopper, he said one thing and he meant another, and how can you trust the words of a man like that? Paul had a clear conscience in his dealings with the church. Uh, He said, this is our boast. Uh, our, Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you with integrity and godly sincerity. Wow, integrity. There's another lost word in our culture, but this is going to be a shorter sermon, so I can't get snagged on everything that could could snag me today. But integrity and godly sincerity. Amen? Paul, this is Paul's relationship with the church. He did not rely on human wisdom. I am shocked today, and of course many of you know that, uh, that our church belongs to the Evangelical Association and that I'm actively involved in that association, so I have uh, uh, a, a feeling and a, a look at many churches throughout uh, America, and I, I am just shocked at how much In America, the church relies on human wisdom. I'm here to tell you, if somebody comes out with, if somebody starts here holding their left ear and jumping on their right foot and their church grows as a result of it, somebody will package that and they'll be doing seminars all over the nation. This is how you grow a church in this culture. Hey, I can't help it we're in a shallow culture that don't value solid worship and don't appreciate the truth of the word. But we can't budge from those things. We don't rely on human wisdom. We rely on the grace of God. Amen? Say amen, somebody. So Paul says that uh, we've done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. And God's grace is not just is not just God forgiving us of our sins, but God's grace is also His empowering us to live as we should in this world. Well, Paul did his best to communicate clearly. Paul was not trying to sound like a theologian and, and, and speak all sort of riddles. Have you ever listened to a politician today? Have you ever listened to much of the media today? That would be an example of not speaking clearly. Amen? But Paul was very clear. See, to God... Uh, there, there is a difference between sin and righteousness. It's clear. There's a difference between darkness and light. It's clear. Just because the world wants to muddy it and, 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 and live in the, uh, the zone of the gray does not change the truth of the Word of God. And we are... Uh, it, it, is imper- it, it is important for us in this day to communicate clearly that the Bible has not changed. Amen? God said what he, God meant what he said, said what he meant, and it's not changed. And we have no right to change it just because culture thinks something else is a better idea. Say amen, somebody. He said, we did not write anything you cannot read or understand. I hope that as you have understood us in part, you will come to understand us fully. Hey, I want to tell you what. It does come in increments. There is a line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. When you begin, when you are confronted with the truth of the Word of God and you refuse to believe it and you refuse to act on it, that's it for you. You don't get more truth until you act on what God's already given you. You should know that. Amen? Amen. That is the truth. This I'm trying to communicate clearly today as the Apostle Paul did. I hope I'm doing all right. He boasted in the Lord. Now, not all boasting's bad, just most of it is. But if you're boasting in the Lord and you're boasting about what God has done, that's a good thing. Because that's your testimony. People need to hear that. People need to know that God is active in the lives of people. Is he active in your life? Has God done anything good for you recently? Anything at all? You can boast about that. You can be happy about that. Yes, you might be going through a a hard time, but God's with you. You're not going through it alone. You can boast about that, and God's going to bring you through it. Amen? Amen. He boasted in the Lord. He said that, that... 
that you can boast of us just as we will boast of you in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to stand before God one day and I want to boast about the congregation of Jerusalem Church. Who's with me? Amen. So uh, he had a clear conscience. He did not rely on human wisdom. He did his best to communicate clearly. He boasted in the Lord. And he was not fickle in his plans. This was their accusation of them. They were running around through Corinth saying, Paul's not really an apostle. He said he was going to come back and visit at such and such time. And he changed his plans. Now if Paul is so unreliable in his plans, how can you trust what he's saying about God? How can you trust his gospel? But I want you to know today that man uh, man makes a plan. Somebody, somebody said it this way. Man makes a plan and God laughs. Anybody ever heard that one? See, because we're all human. And you got to hear this today. The gospel is divine, but it comes to you through flawed human beings. Flawed and weak human beings. And just because a human being may make a mistake and may stumble and may be flawed, it does not alter the authority and the divinity of the message. Amen? And Paul was saying that to them. I wasn't fickle in my plans. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm trying to hurry up this. Maybe five more minutes. Can I have five? Five here? Ten where? Okay, I thought we was at the auction there for a minute. Paul did not say yes and no in the same breath. I see your ten and I raise you five more. No. He wasn't talking cheaply. See, this is one part of that. Uh, you can't believe anybody uh, much today, you know, uh, because people talk cheaply. Jesus said something very important. He said, that, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen. Anybody have heard that verse before? Paul, Paul wasn't talking cheaply. He wasn't just talking in the air when he made a plan to come and see them. He, he had to change his plan, and it was important that he did that. And I won't get into all the details of that today, or we'll go too long. But he, but he asked him, did I make my plan in a worldly manner so that with the same breath I was saying both yes, yes, and no, no? That happens a lot in the world. People will agree to things, and then you'll come back and say, hey, you agreed to this. I never said that. I don't remember ever saying that. Right? Anybody? Is that just my experience? Am I in some warped alternate universe where, uh, well, never mind. I I shouldn't ask that question because somebody out there would say, yes, you are. Where's Brady? He got me last week on that. Right? He, he, He wasn't saying yes or no in the same breath, but he was human. He was human, so situations change for humans, amen? But just because a situation changes and a plan might change does not mean that the gospel of God changes. Just because a culture may change, just because a culture that was founded on believing in God might want to say, we don't want anything to do with that now, and then might want to infiltrate the churches and get all of them not to believe the truth of the Word of God anymore, doesn't change the truth, amen? Paul was human, but his message was divine. He said, did I make plans in a worldly manner? So I was saying yes and no at the same time. But he said, but he said as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. It's not yes, God forgives your sins, but no, he doesn't. It's not yes, there's a heaven waiting for you one of these days, but maybe not. It's not yes, no, maybe so. It's that Jesus Christ has paid the price for an eternity in heaven for everyone who will call upon his name. And that message you can be assured of today. Our message to you is not yes and no, Paul said. He says God's faithful regardless of failing plans. And he says as surely as God is faithful... Our message is not yes and no. See, the message, the truth of the gospel, is based on the faithfulness of God, not on man. Amen? Amen. And Jesus is God's yes. Jesus is the yes of God. He is the amen. He says, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has 
always been yes. Jesus is always the way to heaven. He's always the only way to the Father. There's not ten different ways to God or ten different doors that, and they've got all kinds of different names on it. They've got Muhammad on one door and it's got Islam on another and it's got Buddha on another and, and, and they all lead to the same place. Nonsense. God's not confused. The message is not yes and no. The message is yes in Jesus Christ. There's one door and it's got Jesus Christ written over it. Say amen, somebody. So Jesus is the divine yes of God. He's God's yes to you and I. He says, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, it was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy. It was not yes and no, but in, in him it has always been yes. He is the yes of God for you and I, for the whole world that will call upon him. And he says, the message about Christ, this is what he's saying, always bring results. Now, I could follow some church growth uh, patterns and some different things and, and be up here and do all kinds of fun things to entertain you today, but I would rather preach about Jesus Christ because that is the thing that always brings results. Amen. Now, the other things bring results, but it's not the results we want. It's not salvation. There is salvation in one name, the name of Jesus. In fact, that's what Peter preached in Acts 4 and 12. He says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name given among men under heaven whereby you must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. And when we preach the name of Jesus and people call upon the name of the Lord, they're saved. That's what brings results. He says, it was not yes and no, but in him it's always. In him it's always been yes. What's that mean to you and I today? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Here's what it means to you and I. Every good thing that God has for you is in Jesus Christ. And all the promises of God are in Him. A lot of people are told today, and uh, and unfortunately this is what happens in a lot of Christianity, we run around chasing the promises of God. I, I'm looking for the, I'm looking for a healing. I'm looking for a blessing. I'm looking for help. I'm look, but what Paul is telling us here is everything is in Jesus. You get Jesus and you get all the promises of God. We're not called to seek the gifts. We're called to seek the giver, Jesus Christ. Say amen, somebody. All the promises are in him. He says, no matter how many promises God's made, you can take the Old Testament. Some people say there's 8,000 promises, 6,800 promises. I don't know. All I know is every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I am clinging to his love divine because every promise in the book is mine. Say amen, somebody. He says, no matter how many promises there are, whatever God has for you, they're yes in Christ. Wow, what what a glorious thought that. You get Jesus, you get the whole thing, amen? That's why we pursue Jesus. That's why Jerusalem Church preaches Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's why Jerusalem Church preaches that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, not one way of many ways, not one truth of many truths, but the truth. It's found in Jesus. You get Jesus, you get everything God has for you. The pursuit is over in that sense. You enter into what the Bible calls rest. And you can never enter into that rest in religion or in worldly wisdom where you're constantly striving and seeking after something. It's all in Him. It's in Jesus Christ today. And He says, not only is it in Him, but we say the Amen. You say, what's this got to do with me, Pastor Tom? How do I apply this to my life? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's the answer. 
It's found right here in this verse. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. You want to glorify God today? Say amen about Jesus Christ. That's why the message is called Say Amen, Somebody. (laughs) Because this is it. You get everything you need for this life and for eternity when you say amen to Jesus Christ. Amen means let it be. It means so be it. It means I affirm it. I I accept this truth to my own life. I believe it's going to... Amen is a declaration of faith and it's also one of the names of Jesus. Jesus. In the book of Revelation, he introduces himself as the first and the last. I'm he who is, uh, who is alive, who is dead, and who is alive forevermore. And he says, the, f- the faithful and the true witness, the amen. Jesus calls himself the amen. When you say amen to Jesus Christ, you open your life to everything God has to you. Have you done that? Have you done that rec- recently? That's why the message is, say amen, somebody. So we're going to pray, and I want a real hearty amen at the end of this prayer. And I want you to open up your heart to God as we pray today. Gracious Father, we see here today that you use the Apostle Paul to communicate a valuable truth to us. That although man is flawed... And man can make a plan and have to change a plan. You're faithful. And your faithfulness has been revealed to us in the glory and in the face of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we listen to the world that says yes, yes over here and no, no over there. And their yes is a no and their no is a yes. And they're confused confused about everything. We know that your word has given us a clear truth. And that truth is in Jesus Christ. He is your amen. He is the yes of God. So right now, Holy Spirit, we ask you to touch every heart in this sanctuary today and deal directly with each person so that we will all be drawn into a vibrant relationship with you Not chasing the promises, but pursuing the relationship with the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Open each heart now to say yes to Jesus. We ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Let's all rise and in our hymnals.